I know which doctors are a thing because of my travels around the world, but I think a lot of people here in North America are like, they, ex they don't really exist. Yeah, you'd think that would be from hundreds of years ago and you have these images in your mind, but actually uh, witch doctors in many, many countries exist. It, what, the reason that we engage this is that they were actually sacrificing children. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but nobody in the country had taken on a witch doctor because they're afraid of them. Yeah. But we're not afraid of these guys, they're punks. Like Jesus has all the power from everything I've been reading. And so the problem is they're always a victim, but the other victims always dies. Um, but there was an attack on a little boy, and we'll just say his name is Charlie, and uh, by the head of all the witch doctors, and his name was Cobby. So this little boy, Charlie, was attacked he, by Cobby. Yes, they left him for dead, but the guy, the little kid didn't die. Wow. And so for the first time, we had the head of the witch doctors, we had a little boy that survived. So I asked the Chief Justice of their Supreme Court if I could try their first death penalty case against this witch doctor. And the Supreme Court Justice said, there's no way you're going to ever get a judge to take that because they're so afraid. But then we did. And we tried the case, and the word of this conviction goes out to 41 million people. So you found a judge that would do it. This scrappy, courageous judge. The crazy part, he let us film the whole trial. It wow. was a crazy, and, crazy You know, thing. I, I got a comment on this witch doctor thing, because I, I have a friend, he's a missionary in Haiti, and so he deals with voodoo priests, very similar idea. People are terrified of them, and he tells stories all the time of people who get cursed, and they're healthy in the morning, and they're dead by the end of the day, but he tells me, I'm not afraid, because a curse cannot land on a genuine follower of Jesus. And he, they'll leave things on his porch, and he walks out in the morning, kicks it out of the way, and keeps going on with his day, and nothing ever happens to him. Yeah. So faith, do you think, is that a particular protection? Because these are dark powers. Yeah, I just I just think Jesus, from what I'm reading, he has all the powers and there's nothing left to divide up amongst anybody else. <laughs> so divide zero by whatever number you can think still of and zero. you're still zero. So, um, so the whole idea isn't just engage it. Don't get freaked out about like witch doctors and all that. Just think of people that are insecure like you and I and that are working that out in different ways. And they, they may have other people in the room <laughs> while they're doing it. But the whole idea to just not be afraid, that was the message all the way through scriptures. Wow. Be not afraid. So you did this bold thing and yeah. you actually won your case and he was sentenced to death. Yeah, so Cobby goes uh, away to this uh, dark prison. Uh, but uh, the little boy, this attack happens with a machete. So he was pretty messed up. Mm. Um, but a uh, doctor, heard about what had happened. He was actually learning how to fly a beaver up here in Canada. And he heard the person teaching him, told him about the kid and he lands the plane, calls me and said, I heard about what this kid, what happened and I can fix him. And I'm like, buddy, you didn't hear what got cut off. You can't fix that. And he said, I'm the chief of surgery at Cedar sinai Medical Center. I can fix him. <laughs> I'm like, what? Wow. So I drive up there and he starts drawing on a piece of paper what he's gonna do, which is way too much information. I mean, if they find that at the airport, I'm going to jail. <laughs> and so, but there's something actually beautiful about that. I said, how much would that cost? He said, it would be staggering, but I'll do it for nothing. I'm like, I have nothing. And so, <laughs> so I flew back to Uganda and I uh, found the kid and I became his legal guardian. And we flew him over. We got off the airplane in London on the way back. And we're walking off the plane. He said, Father, could we just walk the rest of the way? I'm like, oh, buddy, no. <laughs> and I check my emails. When there, there's an email. This is when Obama was the president. And the email said this, we'd like to meet Charlie. Isn't that crazy? Mm. And it's legit. So we flew to Washington, D.C. And this kid that two days before was standing in the bush in, uh, on the border of Congo is now standing in the Oval Office. Right. And I just asked myself, like, why does God do that? And I think he wants to blow our minds. We think it's about status and power and all that. And Jesus says it's about kids. And mm -hmm. it's about a childlike faith for you and I too. Kabi, he is the first witch doctor in the history of Uganda ever convicted for child sacrifice. You were part of bringing him to justice, but you couldn't get him out of your mind. God tells you to love your enemies. Yeah, Matthew 5, it says a lot of things to a lot of us, <laughs> including if you're on your way to church and realize somebody has something against you, put it down, go get squared up, and then come back. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about how do we just love our enemies? I'm like, Cobby. So I called the warden at the prison. I said, can I visit Cobby? And he says, like, nobody gets in here. I said, I'm the, actually the consul general for the Republic of Uganda. And he said, like, you're in. So, so we cool. came in, Cobby came in and he took a knee and he started talking about how bad he felt about what he'd done to Charlie. 
And then he started talking about his life and where witchcraft had entered it. And then his words, not mine, he said, I know I'm going to die in this place. You know what I need? I need forgiveness. And I felt like I was talking to a criminal hanging on a cross next to Jesus. You know the one that Jesus turns to and said, you get paradise. And actually something beautiful happened. Copy comes to Christ. And I'm like, no, like him. I wasn't trying to get him in. I was trying to keep him out. But there's simply <laughs> actually something that was Love actually started to change inside of me. I just realized that you don't need to understand grace to give a little grace. Mm -hmm. And so uh, actually Kabi and I meet every time I go to Uganda. And he's been teaching me about what he's learning about faith. Because he doesn't believe the lie that some of us, some of the, your listeners are, are uh uh, believing. He doesn't believe he's the old version of him. He thinks he's a new creation. And you know what? He's right. He is. There's some consequences. He'll be separated from society for his life. But uh, the consequence is not that he's separated from Christ. And so I asked the warden, has anybody ever presented the gospel to all the guys on death row? And he said, nobody gets in here. I'm like, well, Copy lives here now. Could he do it? And it was like I did this Jedi thing because the warden said yes. So Kabi and I stood holding hands in the, in the courtyard of this maximum security prison. And Kabi presents the gospel of Jesus to 3,000 dying men. And you know what? He screwed it up. <laughs> oh, no. I've never heard anybody hack the gospel worse than Kabi. But you know what? There's something beautiful. The, the thing he got right was forgiveness. He got the part right about grace. And everybody in that prison knew this was Kabi who was talking. And the guy standing next to him is the guy that put him there. And there's something beautiful that happens. So all you these... get around that picture. You yes. can argue with Then him. he asks everybody if they want to get baptized. And hundreds of these prisoners are coming out. Kabi's like baptizing. I'm like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, maybe. <laughs> wow. And then Kabi grabs my hand and he said, Bob... I just want you to know that I forgive you. I'm like, you can't forgive me. You're the bad guy. Right, but, yeah, what do you but, have to forgive? Yeah, exactly. But you know, one of the things he's been reading is that he knows that he can't be perfect if I'm his enemy. And he actually is taking the gospel more seriously, I realized, than I was. And so we started a witch doctor school. Yeah, okay, so what is a witch doctor school? Yeah, it's a, we don't teach them how to be witch doctors. They already know. We teach them how to read and write. And the only books we have in witch doctor school to learn are the Bible and love does. This is your first book. <laughs> yeah, you read love their it. textbook. But there's something really actually beautiful in that. These uh, witch doctors are learning. They're starting to see themselves the way that Jesus sees them. When I, I, I'm just, I, again, I don't think we lead people to Jesus. I think Jesus leads people to Jesus. Mm. And I don't think people grow where they're informed. I think they grow where they're accepted. And so there's a place where they're actually accepted. And the crazy part is there's a ropes course up in the northern part of Uganda, probably 100 feet high. And I take all the witch doctors from witch doctor school up to the top. And when we get to the top, I unclip them. <laughs> Give them a little push. They're like, stop pushing me. I'm like, stop scaring people. <laughs> you stop scaring them, I'll stop pushing you. Well, you had a breakthrough recently with two of these witch doctors. They phoned you, Isn't that right? Crazy? And they said, there's a child sacrifice about to happen that yeah, we heard about. From Uganda, they call me in the middle of the night and they called to say a, a new witch doctor's arrived. They took a kid into the bush. They're gonna sacrifice him. Do you think we ought to go get him? And I'm standing on the bed in my boxers. I'm like, get the kid! <laughs> and four hours later, I get a text message from these two bad guys that are actually starting to see themselves in a different light. And the text message says, we've rescued the child. He's with his mother. And the last two words of the text message, love does. So starting to see people that creep us out differently, to see them, if we avoid all the people that Jesus was engaging, it'd be like reading every other page of the Bible and thinking you knew what it said. So just love creepy people knowing that you're among them <laughs> and that, that we're all just making our way towards Jesus. Okay, quick update on Charlie. We're almost out of time, but he had the surgery in Mount Sinai. He did. He, he was did. Successful. He's he's whole and uh, and uh, thriving, top of his class in school, and he's just moving forward with his life because there's people who see him not for all the difficulties he's faced in the past, but for 
what is coming ahead. I actually took him. Every one of my kids gets a 10-year-old adventure with dad, right? Mm -hmm. Charlie turns 10, and I said, buddy, where do you want to go? And he said, Kilimanjaro. I'm like, no, oh, no. don't you want to go to Disneyland? I mean, there's a reason the name Kill is in Manjaro. So me and the four-footer, we just started hiking. <laughs> And uh, you know what, they, he didn't quite make it to the top, but he got to about 14,500 feet, which isn't bad. Yeah. And, uh, and we had this ceremony. I brought all these medals with me and started putting them on his chest. I said, you're brave, you're courageous, you're a mountain climber. I didn't tell him how far he had to go. I said, look how far you've come. Mm. And I think that would be a great way for us to think about our faith with the people that have been creeping us out. Tell them how far they've come. Look at all the past. Don't have them over identify with what was behind. For Paul, who says we're new creations, have them like pressing towards to this hope that God has for him in the future. And, and even if they're witch doctors, them too.